So Miss Irma asked me on Sunday if I would teach, and I love the whole idea of being prepared in season and out of season. I get all these little droplets that God gives me, and if I would really sit down and write those out, I would have been prepared for Miss Irma to ask me to teach tonight, but it's okay. I told her, I said, you know what, Miss Irma, I do better under the pressure, I'll just do it. <laughs> so, um, but this time I did something, I'm doing it a little bit different this time, just because I didn't have anything grand, and I always feel so, like I'm trying to stir something up in you guys, but then I don't know if I get it stirred up, and so then I go away feeling like, what am I doing? Um, so this time, I'm just going to kind of share my lifelong testimony, and I'm going to throw some scriptures in here. Um, so I started my earliest remembrance of going to church. Um, I was probably between the ages of five and eight. We lived in a tiny little town in eastern Oregon called Ukiah, and we had a one-room church. Us little kids were in the very back of the room, and the adults would sit in the very front, and we had to try to do crafts and stuff and be quiet without disturbing the main service up front because, you know, we're little kids. And it was a tiny town, so there wasn't too many of us, but it was enough that we would get loud. <laughs> My favorite thing about going to church when I was a kid was vacation Bible school because we would get to ride on the bus to, um, like, a summer camp, and I'd don't even remember where it was. Um, there is a camp near Ukiah, but I don't know if it was this camp or not. Um, and my mom would make me peanut butter and butter sandwiches. That was my favorite. And I always got a banana. I can still smell the banana in the brown paper bag type of thing. So that's one of my earliest remembrances of church. That was my favorite thing to do. I loved VBS. Um, we didn't go to church a lot. My mom was raised by a Baptist preacher. He was not a good man by any means. Um, very poor father to his daughters. And so she didn't go to church. She kind of raised us in the good things. You know, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have do unto you. Don't have sex before marriage. Those type of things. But as for going to church, she kind of wanted to go on Easter and Christmas type of services, but we just really didn't go. When I was a teenager, um, I had a friend. Her mom went to church in Albany all the time, and so I would spend the night with her, and I would get to go to church with her. And as long as I was going to church, my mom was fine with me going to stay at her house. But then she found out we were skipping church, and she, was, she wasn't so keen on me going to spend the night over there anymore. <laughs> we just stayed up late talking, girls talk and. We just didn't want to get up, and her mom would go to church without us. <laughs> um, and so that's my first remembrance of actually having church potlucks, though, is because then I would get to bake stuff for the church potluck, and I liked being involved in that. Uh, the little old ladies, I remember, to me, they were little old ladies. They would come up and, oh, you bake so well. And I'm like, oh, I loved it. I loved the attention. I'm like, yes. Uh, then as a grown-up, my first grown-up remembrance of going to church, we went out to Holly Church. Um, Tim's brother, Shannon, went out there, and he invited us out to church. And so we started going out there. Uh, we were not married yet, and so we went there. That was the first time I, I gave my heart to God. The first time I was saved, I'll back up a little bit, I was a teenager. We had to go to church because my cousin got grounded, and we had to go to church as her penance. So the pastor at that church um, talked me into getting saved, and that's how that went. And it, it's just not, it's not a true, it wasn't a true save, saving, for, in my opinion. When I actually gave my heart to God, I was 21. And so I was 20. 20? How old was I? I was 20, 21. We'll just go with that. Because I wasn't yet married, and I did not have Bryce yet. So we started going to that church. I devoted my life to God. I was that Christian that said, God, if you want me to serve you, please do this for me. Absolutely, 100%. Um, I have been broke my whole life because I love to spend money. 
the older I get, the more I realize how it's an emotional reaction to things. So I, uh, I am a spender to make myself feel good. I really enjoy spending money on food. Love that one because I love food. It's a, it's a double whammy on that one. But so I would pray all the time for God to heal my finances Heal my finances. I'd play the little radio, and every week they'd give away $5,000 or something like that. It was a contest, and I'd, I'd sit there, and I'd listen. I'd be like, Lord, please let me win. Please let me win. Please let me win. I never won. <laughs> Not once. But that's okay. Looking back, hindsight, it's probably really a good thing. <laughs> um, so fast forward a few years. Bryce came along, Brock came along. Um, We fell away from going to that church due to immature reactions to things. You know, things that go on in the inner workings of church, being young and immature in the Lord, and stuff that affected my, didn't even affect me personally, but was against my family, I took personal, and we just stopped going. Um, So... Never any, they never did anything bad to me. I have nothing bad to say about Holly Church. (laughs) That's not my point here. I had no bad experience. I just took offense upon other people's offenses. Um, But that's part of what my message is tonight, is how I've grown in the Lord, and those little things are funny to me now. And I roll my eyes because I'm like, that was so ridiculous. (laughs) This is such a ridiculous reason to leave church. (laughs) Um, We started coming here in 2005. My mother-in-law, Maggie, went to church here, um, and she ranted and raved and just loved Pastor Tony and said, you got to come listen to him preach. you got to come listen to him preach. So we started coming in August of 2005 uh, after Timothy gave God an ultimatum and said, Lord, if you get me out of this job, I'll start going to church. And sure enough, within an hour, his uh, supervisor was down there. I need you to go over here. And his whole job changed. Um, So he'd come home and he said, I'm going to start going to church on Sunday. You're invited to go with me. But if you don't want to, I'm not going to make you. (laughs) Okay. We pack up our kids and we just go back to church. Um, I remember sitting in the back area back there. It was on that side. That's where we always sat, was in the back on that side. And I knew people spoke in tongues here. Scared the bejesus out of me. Just just made me nervous. (laughs) Will not lie. I sat back there and I'd pray, Lord. Because Brother JC would sit also on this side a little bit too. And he always spoke when he prayed. So if there's a time of prayer or whatnot, he'd be praying and, and I Oh, it was uncomfortable for me. I Again, told you, I was raised in a Baptist household. You just didn't pray in tongues. <laughs> um, so I would pray, God, if this church is for me, I need you to change my heart. If this is where I'm supposed to be, I need you to make this okay. <laughs> Hence, 17 years later, I am still here. Never once left <laughs> after that point, so... Um, we started a Bible study in October. A bunch of ladies started a Bible study, and that was my first getting involved in the church. It was uh, D, and I forget her friend that she worked with. They started a ladies' Bible study. I still have those Bible studies to this day. I have taught um, my at-home Bible studies on some of those. Uh, and just looking back in the little things like I can look back and I can pinpoint like growing up and growing out of those little don't be offended over someone else's offenses and laughing about that I can look back and think about when we sat back there and we were discussing getting new tables for this church at one point in time and they wanted to buy round tables and I thought oh, well, I'll just take my offerings that I give. I won't take away from my tithes, but I'll just donate my offerings to the tables. And I remember Melissa Ward and Pam Ram both giving me this look of, like, 
Oh, you're so cute. Like that, that cute little child. Oh, nice pat on the head. Because that wasn't what they were trying to get us. They were trying to reach us deeper, grow us. Don't take away from what you're already doing, but add to, again, those little things you just miss when you're young. Uh, one of the things I, one of my biggest ones, I actually pulled out my journal and marked a bunch of stuff. I just lost that little paper. Oh, it's a prayer cloth. Um, and I marked a bunch of stuff. This is actually from Ladies' Conference in 2018. And so I'm actually, no, I got to go back further. There's a note in here even further back. And so in my journal from 2018, I did write down a note of something I remembered from 2016 that God had said that he was going to bring back one of my dreams. And some of this stuff you guys may have already heard because I'm an open book about where God has me in my journey. I share it time and time again, and part of that is to remind myself of what God's doing because <laughs> I get very forgetful sometimes. But so he brought back to my remembrance in 2016 that he wanted to bring back a dream for me. Um, and so this was, I wrote this during the ladies' conference and it was about being fit and healthy. And it was a dream I had let die, put on the back burner. Um, another one of those life lessons where Brian and Bobby Joe were new here. And they were the pastors. Bobby Joe started a Bible study. And my Bible study kind of fizzled out. Everybody went to Bobby Joe's Bible study. <laughs> and so I just kind of, you know what, this isn't working. Nobody's here. And I went down a deep, dark slope for a while. But then he said he's going to bring that back. And towards the end of 2016, he talked a lot to me about um, stepping out in faith. I knew my job was going to change. 2017, he developed my faith a lot. It wasn't always comfortable. 2018... I pray, 2017 is when Brock had a stroke, and uh, so that was a good time of growth for me there, because I really knew, I knew it, I, I can stand up here and say it now, but I denied it at that time, that I should have quit my job, right, right then, when Brock got out of the hospital, I knew it, but I put it off, I didn't want to quit my job, I loved my job, loved the family I worked for, great people, but hence comes 2018, and I laid up here on the floor, prayer time after church, and God said, tell him now, because I knew I was going to quit. And I said, nope, I had a date. I knew I wasn't telling him until March, and this is only February. <laughs> this is not how this is happening. But he had worked so much with me on stepping out in faith, well, what do you mean, Lord? What step of faith? He didn't care. He told me, any step, take a step, any step. And that was probably one of the things that was brought up at Ladies Conference in 2018 was a step of faith. Take one, any step. And I was like, oh, gosh. And this was after I had quit my job because I went in, that was Sunday. Next morning, I went in on Monday morning, and I told him that I'm quitting. And, uh, God was so good because I think it was three weeks later, he got a call from a friend of his. He grew up with in my boss at the time. He grew up with in Tillamook and said, hey, our office manager is moving to Sweet Home, and she's looking for a bookkeeping position. Do you know anybody? So he said, I, I think I'm looking. Tell her to come interview with me. And so she's beautiful, and I love her, and we're such wonderful friends. I'm so glad it worked. I'm so glad God worked that out. She's the perfect fit for the office. Um, and I love his faithfulness because had I not listened and went in and learned from that lesson right there, had I not done that, that door wouldn't have been open. 
it was still another week or two before I would have told him and that opportunity could have passed by. It could have put a quirk in some things. But again, you listen to God, you learn those things, he works it all out. <laughs> um, one of uh, my favorite scriptures came to me early on in my walk, and it's uh, Hebrews 13.6, because I deal with fear a lot. I have my whole adult life that I can think of, probably even when I was younger. But it's, it says, um, and I'm reading this one out of the New Living Translation. It says, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear what can mere people do to me. And that's that, what can mere people do to me that I stand on? Because we are just that. We are mere people. We're, we're pretty much, I, I think of like little ants, and they, we can be squashed easily. Not that life is easy, and not that things go well for us all the time, but nowhere are we even near the potential of God. No one can do any, so much to you that God couldn't swoop in and take care of it. And so that, that's always been one of my, my big favorites because no matter what anybody does, they can't outdo God. Um, when I was going through all of my growth in faith, one of the things that God brought to me that just, it's right here too, and I closed it. I'm just going to talk to you guys all night until it's time for pastor to come up here. I have at least seven more minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I thought I marked it right. Okay. Um, it was just as I was getting ready to quit my job at Sandy Amps Spray Service that I was singing a song. Um, and I pictured a warrior rising up in full armor, regardless of what had to be put aside to go into battle for the kingdom of God. I imagined the warrior in armor when I felt a pain, an actual physical pain in my chest. And I had to remind myself that I'm not lost. God called me to this path that I was on. Um, and I reminded myself that he's a way maker. So I have this vision of just a warrior rising up, all decked out, full armor of God, nothing... I always think of a warrior when they're all decked out that nothing can touch them. You know, if you're going into battle, you're dressed head to toe, and you're prepared. Um, one of those things for me, though, is why I have the scripture tattoo on my arm. Um, and it's Exodus 3. And it's when Moses goes to Pharaoh and... Uh, God told him to say, oh, I'm going to mess it up now because this wasn't part of my thing that I rehearsed. I, I have this on here because of God showing me the warrior. And I have to look at it. <laughs> I should have it memorized. Yeah, 314. I am has sent me to you. Um, and it was my reminder that even if you're a Christian, Sometimes God sends you to other Christians. It's not just that I am sent me to the heathens to save them. The I am didn't just send me. He sent me to anybody to send me to save and talk to people about Jesus, no matter who it is. And so as a warrior for Christ, that's, that's my envision of what I'm to do. No matter who it is, if God says go, I'm just to pick up and go. Um, so a lot of that speaks to faith over fear for me. I'm still working on this, overcoming fear. I had a very big revelation of set free from fear up here at the altar. It was not a very quiet 
release. Um, this is very powerful, and it came partly with a dream, and I had spoke with Pastor Wendy about it, and she helped me with that dream because it, it was a scary dream, but then it became a very powerful revelation from God. So faith over fear is still participating in things we value, even if there's potential for danger. And it's because we believe it's worth the risk. So where I'm at right now with my walk, like we have a little prayer group that I, ha- that I sent out a message to the other day and I asked for extra prayer. It was a really rough day, almost a rough two days for me. It was not very proud moment for me Um, and luckily I have people who do cover me in prayer and I came out of that rather quickly but it reminded me of when I went into my dark depression and it it was it was bad it was a bad couple days Kathy called me and checked on me said are you okay I said no I'm not but you know I can't talk about it right now I'm at work (laughs) and I didn't need to fully explain anything to her. She just kept praying. She knew just to keep praying. So the walk I'm on, my health and fitness walk, it's a very evident walk of when you're doing great and when you're not doing so great. Uh, I am not doing so great right now. But it's because I've done a lot of praying. I've done a lot of soul searching over the past few days. There's lots of becauses. And it's that faith over fear and, may, and believing that what I'm walking in is wor- worth the risk. Um, my health is not the best. There's nothing, evidently, there's nothing wrong, wrong, but I'm not the healthiest me I can be right now. Um, and that is one, still one of my fears, that how can I go out in the world and be what God's called me to be when I'm not the healthiest? But God's told me time and time again that I have what I need to go forth and accomplish this task for him. I have everything I need. And it's me stepping out in faith, regardless of what looks like on the outside, regardless of how I feel, and just being real with people. So that's kind of what I thought of when I thought of bringing you guys a message tonight. I'll just be real with you of where I'm at. It's a struggle right now. It's a very hard time. You all could pray for me a lot. (laughs) A lot. Um, But I'm not giving up. And that's something that I've also learned over time is generally when I struggle, I just give up for a while. You know, just let it go. Just don't fight. Just go with the flow. Flow right into it. Just live it out, and then when you're ready, come back. But this time, I don't want to stop the fight. I don't want to give up and let go. I want to stay in it. And so I'm so thankful for to be in this place at this time because I wouldn't have stuck it out for as long as I've stuck it out this time. I'm four years into this, almost five, four it's rolling along it rolls fast y'all know and I actually told someone today I said I'm gonna go to church and I'm gonna teach the heartbeat and I'm gonna talk to all these people that know way more than me they probably should I should just be sitting there learning from them and they're like yes but it's an opportunity still for you to learn and speak to them and I'm like you're so right so along with being thankful for where I'm at in my walk that I'm not giving up, that God never stops trying to teach us, never stops um, reaching out to us, as long as we stick with him. Along with being thankful that, I'm thankful for you guys for listening to me and allowing me to come up and speak to you, however, whatever notes, whatever it is, and allow me to learn and present what I learned to you guys. And so I thank you for that. And that's all I got. It, it is. I did, I did very well just rambling on, so I, I might just need to ramble on more often. <laughs> a 
Let's pray. <laughs> um, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. And I pray over each brother and sister here that as we go throughout the week, that we truly are just seeking out after you and willing to share you with whomever we come across, whomever will listen. Lord, that we just have that heart of fire for you. In Jesus' name, amen.